Welcome to Wednesday Nights at Shoreline. My name is Buddy Soto, and this class is entitled The Painting Answers to Prayer. And today's topic is going to be about the Apostle Paul. We're going to talk about Paul's prayer life. We're going to look at some of the stories in the Bible that are recorded about his prayer life. And just like uh, the rest of this series, we're going to pull some examples from Paul's prayer life that we can uh, apply to our own. Paul, he's a giant in the Christian faith. He stands out so much when we talk about, especially New Testament authors and, and figures in the Bible. Paul actually wrote 13 out of the 27 New Testament books. There's a little debate as to whether or not he is the author of, of Hebrews, uh, but we know for sure that Paul personally uh, has attributed to 13 of the New Testament books, and many of his, his writings influence Christian life today. He is a giant. He stands out among uh, biblical figures. Very much so like if, if you've ever seen a kid's sporting event and there's just one player that is clearly dominating the field, uh, that person is a, a giant in their field, uh, in, in their sport. Uh, I went to high school with an athlete who ended up playing uh, in professional sports. Um, this athlete played in high school both basketball and baseball, and he was so good. I mean, he can hit shots from so far out in basketball. Then he can strike out batters. He played a pitcher in high school. He could strike out batters. He can hit home runs. He, he did it all in both sports, basketball and football. And he went on to play professional baseball for 13 seasons uh, for the Colorado Rockies, uh, most notably. Uh, this was a fellow by the name of Troy Tulowitzki. And he is um, he has accomplished quite a bit, actually. I didn't even know all of his accomplishments until I was preparing for this teaching. Um, he made it to five all-star teams. And he was the only player in the National League who who both had an unassisted triple play. So in baseball, if you're not familiar with, with baseball, uh, at least the, the way things go, you need three outs, right? Three outs to, to retire the opposing team from that half of the inning. Well, this player, Troy Tulowitzki, he made all three outs by himself. There was someone up to bat. The guy hit the ball. He caught it. So that guy was out. Then he ran to second base, stomped on the base, and got out the runner who had left second base. And in the meantime, he tagged another runner with the ball, three outs, unassisted. Nobody else helped. Um, that was a great achievement. But then he also, later on in his career, he... Um, he hit the cycle is the term. I'd have brush up on my baseball terms, but he hit for the cycle, meaning he hit a single. So he hit the ball and he ran to first base. He hit a double, went to second base. He hit a triple, first, second, third base. And then he also hit a home run all in the same game. And he is the only player ever to do both of those feats in the, the National League. Just stood out definitely as a giant in the sport sports uh, sports world of, of my high school and then went on to do great things in professional sports. And then when we look at the evangelical world, a giant in the evangelical world of Christianity without doubt uh, was Billy Graham. Uh, Dr. Graham went on to, to be with the Lord in, in 2018. Uh, but during his many decades of public ministry, it's estimated that he preached to over 200 million people. 200 million people attended his crusades in person. And then out of those 200 million people, it's estimated that 2.2 million people came to the faith and believed in Jesus through one of Billy Graham's crusades, a giant in the Christian evangelical world. And this is Paul. This is Paul in, in the biblical uh, figures that we see in the Bible. Paul stands out tall among 
the other figures, much like Moses um, that, that we study and much like Elijah as well. Paul stands out tall among the others. And every advance for the kingdom of God that Paul played a part of was dependent on his prayers or the prayers of others for Paul. And we'll we'll talk about later that Paul was not too proud to admit just how much he needed the prayers of the saints. Paul is a giant in the faith because of his prayer life. And through an encounter with Jesus Christ himself, Paul's life turned 180 degrees around. I mean, prior to that encounter with Jesus, his name wasn't even Paul. His name was Saul. We read that when he encountered Jesus, everything in his life changed, completely changed. The question is, how many of us can say that God has helped turn our lives completely around 180 degrees from the person that we used to be. Where if we were to look at the you from 10, 20, or 30 years ago, that we would not even recognize you. That God has changed your life so much. Is that you? I know many of you can say, yes, that's me. God has changed my life completely Uh, opposite from the way that I was living. Well, this was Paul. Paul persecuted Christians. He was responsible for the death of many Christians who believed in Jesus. Uh, Jesus then decided to use that zeal and that power that Paul was using for the enemy, now for the kingdom of God. And throughout Paul's Christian life, prayer was the cornerstone of his life. And that's what we're looking at tonight. And the first lesson that we want to learn from how Paul obtained answers to his prayers is that he never stopped praying. Paul never ceased praying. Just like we learned about Moses, how E.M. Bounds so eloquently put it that Moses' censor was constantly filled with the incense of prayer, that he always was praying, Moses was. And the same goes for Paul. Paul prayed unceasingly. Two things are in in common with these guys that, that we're talking about. And so much so was Paul's unceasing prayer that he encouraged the church in Thessalonica this. And this is um, from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. He says, rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Paul told them to pray continually because he knew that is the key to getting answers to prayers. Always keep that dialogue open. E.M. Bounds says this, that the church, in order to obtain answers, must devote itself to unceasing prayer. Never was prayer to cease in the church. This is God's will concerning his church on earth, that we constantly meet with him in prayer. And this is what Paul did. We know from Paul's letters that he encouraged people to look at him as an example, to look at his Christian walk as an example, because in turn, he was looking at Christ. Paul knew that if his eyes were fixed on Christ, that he would be doing the spiritual disciplines that other people can can then follow. And this was modeled in his prayer life. And is that something that, that you can say? Is that something that you can tell the younger generation coming after you, this, these young people that are, are going to be responsible for so many things in, in the world to come, um, the, the adults of tomorrow? Is this something that you can tell them to, to look at my example to shape your spiritual disciplines? Now, this doesn't always have to come verbally like that. and You don't have to uh, tell the young people to look at my spiritual disciplines. But let me tell you that they are watching. They're observing. 
in my uh, many years with youth ministry, I can tell both from conversations with young people and 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 just through through being around young people over the years that they look up to the leaders that are that are around them. They look up to to those that have more experience and and whether we we put it forth verbally or not, they are following our example. So will we live a life that is aware of other people um, keeping an eye on us and, and, and shaping their spiritual disciplines uh, after us? And, and if so, we need to constantly be in prayer uh, with God, unceasing prayer. Paul obtained answers to his prayers, and he knew that those who followed his example would as well. They would receive answers if they never ceased praying. It's a continual dialogue with the Lord. E.M. Bounds continues to say, He who urges prayer on others must first tread the path of prayer himself. And that's just what Paul did. Paul first was a man of prayer. Our second point today is that sometimes conditions give birth to prayer. External conditions, conditions uh, that, that come into our lives that are thrown at us, give birth to prayer. We see that in the scenes in Acts chapter 16, where Paul and Silas are thrown into prison. And this is after that they've been stripped of their clothes, that they've been beaten, they've been humiliated because of their their work for the kingdom of God, because they were sharing the gospel. They were, were humiliated and beaten. They were thrown into prison, hurting, just, um, just in, in such a bad condition, a tough, low condition. I saw on a TV show recently, one of the, the characters in the TV show, while they were at their most rock bottom part, they said, I didn't know rock bottom had a basement. I thought that was, that was really neat. And, and sometimes it's, it's a, it's a re reflection of, of how um, we can feel in our lives that we have just, we've hit rock bottom which is the, it's, it's a condition of our life, but it can bring forth such incredible seasons of, of prayer, of communion with the Lord. And Paul and Silas, they reacted to their conditions, the Bible says, through prayer and hymns. In the jail, that famous scene where, where they're singing and, and they're praying to the Lord, and he, he miraculously makes it so that they uh, can escape from the jail. But the condition that they were in gave birth to prayer. If it wasn't for those conditions, they probably would not have been, been so adamant in their prayer and their singing to God. And when we reach our lowest, darkest points in life, it's, it's sad to say, but it's not until those moments do we sometimes truly start dedicating the time, the intensity, and the, the earnestness that, that God deserves through our prayers. We, we exhaust our, our human resources. The, we exhaust the things that we can do on our own. And when we, we can't think of anything else, we often turn to God in prayer. But James writes in James 4, verse 8, that if we draw near to God, God will draw near to us. So even if we've selfishly tried to handle things on our own, and then we, we, we use God as our last resort through prayer, God still honors that. I can tell you personally that when I was in one of the, the, the darkest times in my life where I hit rock bottom and the basement of rock bottom, that God showed up for me and he can show up for you too. The conditions of, of my life, the, 
in, in reality, the, the conditions that the poor decisions I made in my life uh, brought about such, such brokenness. Um, it made me retreat to my prayer closet. And in fact, it was a closet. To, if I can be, be open and be real with you guys, I, I retreated to one of the closets in, in our home and just rolled up into a ball and was just praying deep, fervent, just prayers from the heart that that God would intervene and help me through that season. And he, and he did. And what it did was that it gave birth. Those conditions gave birth to a, a rich season of, of prayer and communion with the Lord, which ultimately brought uh, answers to the prayers that I had and restored the relationships that, that I had, had ruined. God meets us when we're at our rock bottom and we reach out to him in prayer. I have a friend who, who recently uh, shared a, a major announcement um, to her social media friends, and it, it was an answer to her prayer and other people's prayers uh, for her father. So I'm going to read uh, this post that she shared on social media as an example of the power of prayer. Here we go. Speaking of miracles, testimony time. My dad, who had been battling stage four cancer, just got a report from the doctors that they can find no evidence of disease. Won't he do it? He said he would. Thank you, Jesus. Then she goes on to say, let me tell you, when the diagnosis came over a year ago, it was not easy hearing and certainly not welcome. But after acknowledging the issue at hand and all the emotions that come with it, then taking it to the Lord and hearing the word of God, agreeing with and speaking what God said, walking with God in the process and journey through this, coming back to God when things felt shaky, putting trust and faith in God even when he couldn't see the desired outcome just yet, he being uh, the, her father who, who had stage four cancer. Along with being supported in prayer from family, friends, churches, and from work and doctors, I've seen my dad go through all this to not only be healed, but be even stronger in his relationship with God like never before. And she finishes with this. It's not just about the miracle, but it's about the miracle worker. To God be the glory. What a great story. And there were points in her, her social media post about prayer. She said that they took it to the Lord. That's going to God in prayer. Then she goes on to say, agreeing with and speaking what God said. So I believe that is not only uh, just praying with God verbally, but opening up his word, reading the Bible, praying back to God's scripture and agreeing what he says in scripture. And they were being supported in prayer from their family, friends, churches, even their, their doctor. That, that's such a great uh, testimony of the miraculous power of God. And uh, we can gather that the Lord answered their prayers by healing that man of stage four cancer. But I think that if they didn't reach out to those many people, their friends, the family, family, church, and the doctor, if they didn't reach out and ask for prayer, ask for help, things may have turned out differently. God honors the prayers of righteous people. And that leads us right into our next point, that, that Paul asked for the prayers of the church. Paul asked for prayers very frequently. And in the book, Obtaining Answers to Prayer, Bound says this, Paul's many requests for prayer for himself from those to whom he ministered showed that Paul had a high regard for prayer because he knew the source of help. Paul held prayer with such high regard that he asked for prayer frequently 
from those that he was ministering to. And proof of this is in his letters to the church in Rome. Uh, This is taken from Romans 15, verses 30 through 32. Paul says this to the Romans, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Pray that I may be kept safe from the unbelievers in Judea, and that the contribution I take to Jerusalem may be favorably received by the Lord's people there, so that I may, be, I may come to you with joy by God's will, and in your company be refreshed. And again, Paul writes to the church in Ephesus now. This is from Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. Paul says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Paul had no problem asking for prayer. There was no pride, even though he was such he was held in such high regard, even at that time, and, and he was very respected. He had no problem asking for the prayers of the saints because he knew that they had power, the prayers of the saints. And that I think is that's the proof that Paul believed in God's uh, answers to prayer when the saints are praying. And the request that he made in those, those two scriptures that I just read out for you, the requests that he made were in line with God's plan. I think that's something important we need to remember that the requests that we make should be in line with God's plan that is laid out in scripture that we read in the Bible. The requests were for health, for safety, for joy, and for strength. Why? To spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That spreading of the gospel, the message that Jesus died for everyone's sins. If they're willing to accept that sacrifice, they can spend eternity with God. That gospel message is God's will. And those prayers were answered. Paul went on to share with many people the gospel of Christ. And when our prayers are in line with God's plan, we also will obtain answers to our prayers. And we should also utilize the prayers of the church. When's the last time you asked someone to pray for you so that you can be used for God's purposes? It's, it's probably not a prayer request that we frequently make to people when we're talking about prayer. Um, I can tell you that the times that I've asked for that from, from people that, that ask me, what can they pray for in my life? If I tell them, pray for opportunities for me to be bold for Christ, they'll come. God honors that prayer because he wants his message about his son to be out there to, to the lost world. We need to be bold. We need to listen to the Spirit and respond. do our part to respond in, in a way that, that spreads the gospel of Jesus. Our last point is this, is that Paul made it a habit to pray for others. So Paul believed in the powers of, of, of the praying church, but also he had a habit of praying for other people. This is called intercessory prayer, where we are praying on behalf of other people to God. And we see an example of this in the book of Acts, chapter 20. Uh, this, this story is verses 7 through 12, and it's one of the most relatable Bible stories for me. I'll tell you why at the end. So here it is, Acts 27 through 12. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people. And because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. There were many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. 
When he was sound asleep, Eutychus fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. So it's not plainly indicated, it's not plainly stated that Paul prayed for young Eutychus after he fell three stories down onto the ground. But we can gather from, from knowing about Paul that he, as he held Eutychus closely, he said a prayer to God for the healing of Eutychus to come back to life. And I said, I can relate to this story because I too once fell out of a window. It wasn't three stories high. Uh, it, was, it was about maybe a story and a half. It was at a summer camp and uh, I was there with my friends, church summer camp. Uh, we were playing cards up at the top bunk of this, this cabin. Uh, window was open. There was a screen there, but I leaned back, maybe thinking it was a wall or something. And I fell out the window, um, but uh, I didn't die. I wasn't brought back to life, but I could definitely relate to, to young Eutychus there. Back to Paul, though, and how he intercedes for others. If you're taking notes, these are some other scriptures that you can look into that we don't quite have time to go into. Um, but if you want to jot down Romans 1, 9, 1 Thessalonians 1, 2 through 3, Ephesians 1, 16, 2 Timothy 1, 3. All of those scriptures and the ones, um, the one I read about Eutychus, they're examples of Paul praying for others. And if we want to obtain answers to prayers, we need to pray parallel with God's will for other people. God's will our prayers for them or those people need to be parallel to each other. They need to line up uh, so that we can receive those answers to prayers. Make it a habit to regularly pray for other people. When you're having a conversation with people and if they, they bring up something that, that you know can be a prayer to God, make it your, 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 your best um, habit to pray for them right there and then if you're able to, or if not, you can let them know that I'll keep you in my prayers. Uh, we need to pray habitually for other people. And there we have it, Paul, whose life was turned upside down when he had a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Jesus Christ. Paul was first and foremost a man of prayer. And he was a man who received answers to his prayers. And if you want to grow deeper and more effective in your prayer life, would you learn from Paul's examples? Study his model. Study his habits. And you'll see more of your prayers answered when you follow the model that he set before us for us to follow. Let's pray. Father, thank you for another just a great eye-opening uh, session where we got to learn about your apostle Paul, who you met and changed his life completely from what it used to be, God. And so many of us can relate with Paul's story and, and how we are not the same as we used to be. God, would you help us through your Holy Spirit to learn from the model of prayer that Paul set before us in his writings and in his examples while he was alive here on earth. Jesus, we want a deeper prayer life with you. And as we meet to discuss, go over some questions and talk about this, this teaching tonight, God, uh, would your Holy Spirit be there? Would you help us to increase the effectiveness of our prayers as we apply what we've learned? In your mighty, holy name, amen. Thanks for viewing the teaching online. Please join us for a time of discussion beginning at 6.30 p.m. led by Buddy Soto. To join, please visit our Wednesday night at Shoreline online page on our website and click join discussion. We look forward to spending more time with you as we dig deeper into this topic of prayer. We'll see you then.